What is it like being a Jamaican in Djibouti? Hi, I'm Xavier Murphy, the founder of Jamaicans.com. And today in Jamaicans to the World, I talk to Marsha Murray, a Jamaican living in Djibouti. Welcome, Marsha. How are you? Oh, thank you. I'm doing good. It's um, early morning here. <laughs> yes, about, yes. Um, what, a big time difference, but... I had to get on and, and do this interview with you. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you for, for doing it. So <laughs> let's jump right in. Which part of Jamaica are you from? I'm from Kingston, um, uh, close to St. Hughes, across from JDF. That's where okay. I grew up. So I think you give away part of it. Um, and folks, just let me add, I know Marsha. Uh, we have known each other for years. A uh, close friend of my wife. And and so, you know, she had to mention St. Hughes because the swans, <laughs> right? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Got to put a plug in anywhere I can. <laughs> And again, I'm married to a swan, so I know I need to, to make sure I, I mention it a couple times. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so tell us the story of how you got to Djibouti. Well, I am a, a content. I am working here. Um, okay. I can't tell exactly what I'm doing, but... Uh, yeah, that's basically how I got here. <laughs> All right. Inter interesting enough. Djibouti. No, this is <laughs> the, the horn of Africa, um, right there near Ethiopia and and so on. So very interesting. The name is also the name is always interesting. What do they call the people? Yes, because I, they call them Djiboutians. Uh, okay. It's funny because a lot of people, a lot of Westerners don't pronounce the name and they always mess it up trying to put the D, but the D is silent. So it's D-J-I-B-O-U-T-I, -I, but it's pronounced Djibouti. Okay, and they always so... make fun like the booty and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can imagine. <laughs> so, so it's Djibouti. <laughs> Yes. Did I say it correct? And, yes, you did. And the people are Jabudia, Jabudia, Jabushan. No, okay. Jabushan. Okay. Yes. So, tell us a little bit about the people. Well, uh, most of the people are from. Somalia or Ethiopia, they are very friendly, um, love to help. They, they're basically, you could say it's kind of like Jamaica in some sort of way. Um, not the culture, it's more, the culture is more Islamic, Muslim religion type thing. Um, but they're, they're not as, as strict as the ones that yeah. everybody else knows of those in Iraq or Afghanistan, that they're, they're a little bit more laid back. Okay. And when you say uh, kind of like Jamaica, I know the laid back part, is it, you know, the manageable thing where when I book you up, you know, morning, evening, yep. you know, you want some coffee or something like that? Yep, they they freely offer their home to you. They freely offer food if they have it. Um, it's it's comfortable, very comfortable. Okay, that's good. And when and when you say you're Jamaican, how do people typically react? They get very excited because you know we have a lot um, the. Rastafarian religion or is very 
prominent there as well, not Delhi, but in Africa itself. And so a lot of people are like, oh, Bob Marley. And, you know, a little bit later, they may say um, Usain Bolt, but most of the time it's all about Bob. <laughs> okay. That's about all I know about Jamaica, I think. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you hear any of Bob's music on, on any of the streets there or anything? Um, not regularly, no. Um, it's mostly Arabic music. Um, they do have some pop culture, but mostly that in Europe, not a lot of American stuff. So, okay. Yeah, it, it's, it's mostly their music. Okay. Middle Eastern, and whatever. All right. And... Uh the the food there talk to us a little bit about the food what's the food like so they have this fish that uh, um they fry open um i'm not sure what kind of seasonings they use but all i know is that it is awesome it's so good um so is it, they, is it you like, can go, go ahead i'm sorry go ahead no i was saying is it like health yeah, style they, where you go and you pick out your fish and you say, I want this fish and they cook it for you? For, for sure, yes. Um, you can see the, the fishing boats and everything right there on the dock and you just go and you pick it out and you and they fry it and season it up and everything right there. So, yeah. So just being, um, you know, just adding to that, what sides do they sell with the, the fish well um it's mostly like they, they do a lot of potatoes and not a lot of rice but more like quinoa or um what do you call that um i forget but it, it's it's um they they eat it with their hands or they eat it with okay. the bread so so it, it's just awesome so you're you're taking off the side of the fish and you're basically you know just using your hand <laughs> <laughs> no <laughs> no they do have utensils that we use um but when you say the natives eat most of them use their hands yes okay All but right. not in the restaurant not in the restaurant and what type of fish? Well, I, I like snapper. I know that the fish that I eat is snapper, but I'm not a, you know, I don't know much about fish. I just know that I love seafood. And right. I can't tell you what um, specific to he, th this area or anything like that, but um, fish. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And, and so it sounds like, the beach and the shore is is popular there oh yes um so their holidays or their weekends are friday and saturday and usually on a saturday they would go they'd go down to the beach and people would sunbathe and you know do play soccer and all that stuff down there um usually i'd go um probably on a on a sunday and it's quieter and we go snorkeling and it it's the snorkeling is beautiful that's one of the things that you should do when you come to Djibouti is go snorkeling because it's absolutely gorgeous i i read when i did you know i i try my best to not dig too deep into the country because i want to come in with a with fresh eyes and hear it from the folks that are living there but interestingly enough i did see them mention that snorkeling is popular and mm -hmm. um you know i guess their fishing holes or some why is it so popular um i'm not sure why it's so popular but it's there's not too many things to do in Djibouti okay. and okay. so the beach is one of the most common places that people would go to and snorkeling fishing um diving um 
the fish, I guess that's there, it's native to it, or, or maybe, you know, it's, it's warm water. So a lot of fish from all over the place, I guess, I don't know, <laughs> it's pretty. <Okay. laughs> they have a lot, it's volcanic um, area. They so it sounds like, it sounds like this is, a, <laughs> it sounds like this is an activity that you love to do. Oh yes. Every weekend, every weekend. I'm in the water. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, there's not too much to do. So yes, every weekend I'm in the water. And, <laughs> and different species of fish, you're, 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 you know, I, I think you had, you had, um, I'd seen cor you said coral or I'd seen coral is popular. They have, yeah, they have sea coral. They have, um, they have little Nemo's, they have snapper, <laughs> they have, um, yellow tail. They have I, some I'm, with whiskers. I'm wearing my orange. I'm wearing my orange for little <laughs> Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they and, and they have go ahead, some sorry. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. They have some huge, huge, huge. Well, it's a fish, but it's um well I'm not gonna call it a fish. It's a it they call it a whale shark. And if the they have um it's not it looks like a shark but it's, it doesn't behave like a shark. <laughs> it's very passive, very quiet, very graceful. No, no, no. no. <laughs> if, it, if it looks like a shark, I am not taking any chances of getting in the water with something that looks like a shark because I don't know how to identify. <laughs> oh, my. Well, <laughs> well, I know that when the boat took us out there, and right. before I got to the water, they were like, oh, yeah, there goes, a sh there goes a whale shark. There goes a whale shark. I'm like, are you sure it's a, sh it's a whale shark and not a shark? And they were like, yes, it's a whale shark. It's okay. Get in, get in, get in. And so everybody piles into the water and you go and you, at first when I got in, I was, my heart was in my mouth because I was just like, oh my gosh, if this is ever a shark, I'm dead. <laughs> but <laughs> thankfully I it was a whale shark. <laughs> and do you get to touch the whale shark? No, no, no. Well, you're not supposed to, because um, they're out in out in in the wild, right? So they, like anything, you have to be very careful. Um, you're not allowed to touch them, but you can swim along with them. Um, never, never, never go by their tail because that's what um, moves them along. And just one swift swing of their tail you can you know it can send you really really far how huge how huge are they oh boy um they are about this they're bigger than they're like the size of a whale but look like a shark so you see the fin coming and everything okay yeah. um you are a brave lady i don't care <laughs> what they had told me there is no way I'm getting in there with something that looks like a shark. And, and you said whale shark. Nah, yep. not me. <laughs> I think that was, and, that was probably one of the best experiences I've had here in Djibouti. Was swimming nice. with the whale shark. Nice. All right, brave people. I leave that up to you. I'm, I'm a scared cat. <laughs> and is there any historic sites that are in that region? Um, there, there's a couple. Um, one is called Lake Asal. Um, I've been out there. It's um, Lake Asal is Salt Lake. Um, when you go out there, it's a, probably the saltiest one um, or one of the saltiest lakes in the world. And when you go there, you can see salt for miles. And then the water starts, you know, it, it's very, it's very um, slow moving because it's so heavy, I guess, with a lot of salt in it. And you just see the salt and the white for miles. So I've heard that with these salt lakes, you could, it's easy to float in the water. 
Is that true? It's true, but you don't want to get into Lake Assal. <laughs> I mean, if you go, like, <laughs> it's too salty. Well, in my view, anyway, I haven't seen anybody go swimming in it, but it's it's extremely salty. I mean, it's probably where they get most of the salt from that they use for seasoning or whatever. I don't know how they do it, but that's probably where the Jabushans get their salt from. Nice, nice. All right, so I I should swim with the, the whale shark, but I should not yes. swim in the salt lake. <laughs> nope. Oh, I would. <laughs> you could try. <laughs> so, but I think I'm a little more adventurous than you. <laughs> it sounds that way. Any mountains? Any any mountains around the regions where where you are? Djibouti has some mountains. Um, I've never been to them, but okay. um, I know that they're way cooler than than down in the city or you know, in the, in the regular flat plateau areas, because the, the land, the land space is mostly flat and hot. I mean, it gets to like 110 degrees, sometimes 20. Um, it's hot. Uh, if you think Jamaica is hot, this is worse, but this is just heat. It's not um, humidity or anything like that. It's just a lot of heat. So you get, you, yeah. it gets hot. In the, it gets hot. In, in the nighttime, is there a sharp temperature drop? Not at all. It's hot. <laughs> it's in the daytime, um, when it gets to like 90 degrees, you're like, oh my gosh, where's my sweater? That's, that's how hot it is all the time. That's why people ask for them sweater at 90 degrees. <laughs> So, <laughs> so the economy itself, is it, um, how is the economy there? How is the cost of living there? So the economy is, well, just like they say, it's, it's, um, a lot of people work or they have, they have a high unemployment population. Um, a lot of the people are either service oriented. So they work in like the, the maybe a hotel or, or at the port. Right. No, right. So the jobs are, um, they have one, one, um, what do you call it? Internet service or, or cable or whatever. And right. you work with them or most of the yes, people, I it's like, so where they where they sell the fruits and vegetables on the side. Right. That's their market. I don't really have a, a, a mall per se. Um, okay. Everything is like out of a storefront on the side of the road. Mm. That sort of. Oh, what's the price they then? have here? The price, it can be expensive. Mm. Um, it can be expensive, especially food. Because anything outside of the the seafood or anything like that is going to be expensive because they have to import most of the stuff that they have here. It's not grown because the temperature is too hot and they don't get that much rain. If it rains okay. here, uh, everywhere gets flooded because it's so hard. the The water soaks up like almost immediate, and it's it just dries right up. Mm, I see. So. And, and I, I don't know the distance, but I know Ethiopia is not too far or it doesn't seem mm -hmm. from the map too far off. Have you visited? I have visited Ethiopia. I've visited Kenya. Um, and those are the two mostly that I've, I've come in contact with. Yes. Okay. And, okay. and they're beautiful. They're beautiful. They're, they have a little bit more green than, than Djibouti. I see. No, Marsha, thank you for, for spending some time telling us a little bit about Jabuni. I got you up early in the morning there. Um, so I'm winding down. Couple questions. Okay. First, you land in Jamaica, you get off the plane. 
what is that one thing that you are doing? I can sawfish and coconut water. <laughs> That's what I'm having. And a tasty patty. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. No coconut. Uh, uh, miss, no I coconut there. No, no. Everything is it, it's extremely dry. When I say desert, I mean desert. It's extremely hot. People work in the early mornings and in the late evenings. During the daytime, they're off. Um, it's it's too hot. There's not much, not much, not many things there. It's mostly desert um, vegetation. Man, that's that's very interesting. So you, so customs, some of the customs that people have developed because of the heat must be very interesting for you seeing that. Um, yeah, but, um, because, because you're saying in the daytime, it's too hot to work. And, and so it's almost like there's a, there's a break in the, the well, day. Yes. Well, if you work outside, like those people that work at the ports, right? They only come out of the buildings if, if necessary. And then they have those that obviously have to be outside all the time, but it's hard because it's so hot. Um, you know, they wear a lot of clothes. It's not like our t-shirts and, and jeans. Um, they they have on the, um, I forget what you call it, but the outfits, the men have on, just like the how the um the Muslims dress or the Islamic people dress and yeah. the men in their dress full dress outfits, wear yeah. all those things. So that's the type of outfit they layer to keep cool and not get burnt. So, <laughs> my final question is this one: How do you okay. say goodbye? Oh boy. Um, uh, I don't remember, but I know hello. <laughs> That's fine. Hello is like we, um, we could say hello too. <laughs> it's French, right? So it's French, and you say "comment ça va," and you say "ça va bien," and um, but they have they have a lot of it's it's French. Um, um, influenced okay but they have a lot of arabic and and other dialects that they also use okay so it's basically if it was if it's french it's avoir i guess oh avoir. you can say that yes there you go <laughs> french class kicking in <laughs> oh no i never took french <laughs> that's the wife i think she took the french <laughs> <laughs> well, Marsha, thanks again for joining us and telling us a little bit about Djibouti. And uh, listen, stay safe and stay out of that heat. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Show us some love now. Hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss a video.